Hello everyone and welcome back for another Missing Stamps video. This is Cassie. Today we're going to be making some wall art. Here are the products I'm using. I've got the Blooming Brushes stamp set along with our Fancy Shells stencil. I have a 6x6 six six canvas panel and then I also have some heavy gesso. So let's go ahead and speed this up because it does take a little bit of time and then let's get started. This heavy gesso is actually a little heavier than normal. I've had this jar for a couple of years and I'm at the very tail end of it so it's definitely a little thicker than what you would normally get um, but you could use like a uh, a paste of some sort that would work pretty much the same. I just had the gesso handy and it was right there and I thought well might as well use this. So I grabbed this in a palette knife and I am not trying to cover the entire canvas. I want there to be a little bit of interest there so I'm kind of moving that stencil around and grabbing more gesso and um, just kind of pushing it through that stencil. I am not concerned about it being super uniform. I don't mind some of the swipe marks, if you know what I mean. Uh, it gives a lot of great texture and I just, that's what I was going for. So then we'll go into each of the corners. I'll peel off some peel. I will scrape off some of that excess heavy gesso, save that for another project. And then I realize I want to get a little bit more down in that lower corner, that one more corner that doesn't have anything. So I'll pick up my stencil and you know, put a little bit through there too. You definitely want to go clean off your stencil. Don't let this sit on there. You'll, you could ruin it or just may have a very hard time getting it off of there later on. So I'm going to go clean up my mess and then we're going to move on to the next step, which would be heating it. Now, typically you could let this sit and dry. I am not a patient crafter or a patient person really. So I always use my heat gun, even in mixed media. Uh, it sometimes will bubble and I kind of like that look because the whole point of that is for texture anyway. But if you read the directions on that Liquitex bottle, it does say to let it sit for 24 hours. That's probably so, that, you know, if you wanted to set anything on top of it, I guess, or close, if you put it in a book, close the book or whatever the case may be. But I'll tell you, I didn't have any issue working over the top of this, but it did take a few minutes to get that to dry to the touch. And now we'll move on to our next step. So keep in mind, I never prepped this canvas. It is just a plain canvas. And so we'll have to deal with that later on. But I used some old paper distress spray stain. Now I'm bringing in some scattered straw distress oxide spray. And we're going to go back and forth between distress oxide sprays and distress spray stains. And I'm heating in between on some of those. This color is the saltwater taffy distress oxide. And I didn't have a plan when I got started. Honestly, with mixed media, it seems like I just kind of go with the flow, which can be a little bit uh, frustrating for somebody like me because I do like to have a, a thought in my head before I get going. But I have found with mixed media, it's best to just keep moving. And I will tell you, about 75% of this canvas, like the whole time I was working on it, I was not in love. <laughs> I was not in love. Right now I don't even like those colors. I think they don't look good together. I am splattering some antiqued bronze distress spray stain, which is really pretty cool. It has um, some mica bits in it, so it's kind of shimmery. And I'm adding that to the corners and I did the splatter. And as you can see, I'm kind of bumping that down, trying to get that to spread a little bit. Heat setting in between. And in some cases it is good and dry. In other cases it doesn't get that dry. And that's okay, I'm gonna keep working with it. Now I'm bringing in some cracked pistachio and I'm looking at that going, why? That looks terrible. I mean, it really does. It uh, With that background and now trying to layer this on top. But again, my suggestion when you have moments like that is to just keep working through. I've worked with enough mixed media to know that oftentimes you just have to keep going. And if in the end you still hate it, just go over the top of it with regular gesso not the heavy gesso. <laughs> All right, I brought in some distress spray stains. That first one was wild honey. And then I brought in speckled egg. And again, still not loving it, not loving it at all. And then it mixes in with that cracked pistachio that I used. And it, you know, gives a little bit of a brown, which is okay. But then I bring in fossilized amber. I'm gonna spray some of that in there. And I like how that starts to mix. When you use those spray stains and those oxides together, it gives a, you know, just a different look. And I think it's pretty cool. So um, the way those oxides dry, they dry kind of matte looking and chalky, which is neat. 
That final color we're using here is Seedless Preserves and that one is a Distress Oxide Spray. And I don't know, I'm starting to actually kind of like it now. <laughs> and so then I bring in some Speckled Egg in Distress Oxide Spray. I wasn't really loving the Distress Spray Stain, so the Distress Oxide, Distress Oxide Spray was good. And now looking at that, I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this as my catalyst for the colors that I use when I start to actually color. But I'm not done with this background yet. I want to bring in some of those foundry waxes. And if you haven't played with those before, they're really pretty cool. I found the best way for me to adhere them is to use my finger. That gives it a little bit more of an organic look. And I'm just putting little bits of that down. You definitely want to make sure that you shake it really well. Putting some down on my glass mat, grabbing it with my finger, and rubbing over the texture and on the edges of my canvas. And it doesn't look like much right now. It kind of looks very matte. Um, but with these foundry waxes, you have to heat them. So definitely keep your bottle itself away from any sort of heat. Uh, and then, you know, when you're happy with how you've worked that on there, I'm going to bring in my heat tool. But I'm going to keep spreading that around, just getting it mostly in the corners and over some of that texture. And I love how it grabs on there. And uh, it just, I don't know, it adds to it for sure. Just kind of spreading that over that texture lightly. And then I'll use a baby wipe to clean off my finger and clean off my mess. But it's definitely got that mixed media feel, right? So here's where I'll bring in my heat gun and hopefully you can see what happens. It goes from a matte to a shiny waxy look, which is so cool. And you just want to make sure that you're hitting all of that. Even the edges. So I like how I did the edges. So those aren't white anymore. Those have that foundry wax on them. And you can see it starting to get shiny and it just looks so neat. I suppose you could leave it as is before heating it, but heating it, I mean, that's really, check that out. It looks like you spread wax on there, which is really, really awesome. All right, and because I used Distress Oxides and Distress Spray Stains and I didn't um, prep this canvas ahead of time, I'm going to heat set this just a tiny bit more, and then I am going to hit it with a fixative. And I have a matte fixative that I use just to make sure that nothing spreads around on my hands when I'm playing with it later. All right, now it's time for some color. And what I did is I stamped all of my images onto some watercolor cardstock and I stamped that using some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is a pigment ink. And then I made sure to cover that with a clear embossing powder. I typically like to do that when I'm watercoloring images like this because that gives me an opportunity to be able to color and not worry about things being dry next to it. It provides these little wells where the color will kind of sit in and a barrier in between areas so you don't have to worry about painting right next to something that you just painted. Because typically you'd have to work from one space to the next and leaving space in between so that things can dry. Otherwise you'll get a bleeding effect. I do bring in that antiqued bronze and I paint with it as well. Uh, so I do go back and forth between using these Daniel Smith watercolors that I have and also bringing in some of those Distress Oxide sp uh, sprays. I put a little bit of those on my glass mat and just color with those just so that I can bring in some of that color from the background into what I'm painting now. But that antique bronze looks really pretty painted with and it has this beautiful shimmer and you'll probably be able to see that later on. But check that out. Super pretty. And I also use that antique bronze on the areas that are metal on those brushes. So for here, I mixed a couple of colors. I And I'm doing it right on the paper. It probably makes it a little bit easier that these are Daniel Smith watercolors, uh, watercolors. And then the paper itself is a more expert watercolor paper. And so I'm just putting down some purple and bringing in a red or a pinky red color and blending those in together. I thought those mimicked the seedless preserves pretty well. Although I could have probably just brought in the, the seedless preserves and painted with that as well. I wanted to go true mixed media friends, <laughs> which I definitely did. <laughs> All right, then we'll move on to just using a black for the brush itself. And we'll do that for all the brush pieces. 
and then bring in a little bit more of that antique bronze for the flower centers. And then as I said, I do it on the metal pieces of our paint brushes. And then I'm gonna bring in some of that cracked pistachio for our leaves that will really draw in that color. And painting with the Distress Oxide sprays or even just the Distress Oxide inks themselves gives you, like I said earlier, a matte finish, but sometimes because of watercoloring with it, it'll separate out and give you a couple of two-tone images on some of that, or not images, but um, two-tone ink colors. I didn't have a lot of that going on here, so I do bring in some of my Daniel Smith colors to uh, just add a little bit of depth to those leaves. But yeah, it worked really, really well. And it's fun to paint with the different mediums that are out there, for sure. And then mixing them. <laughs> Mixing them can be a lot of fun as well, too. I wanted these flowers to stay mostly white, so I did bring in a very, very pale yellow to kind of spread around the edges and then just blend that out all the way because I figured there was plenty of color going on on the background, so I thought the white flowers would be nice. So here's where I bring in just a very light blue and just kind of dab it on the edges where I think there would be some shadowing and shading. And then I blend that out a little bit. But we do the same thing for all the leaves. That's why I'm not showing you all of the painting. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. But yeah, just blending that out. Then our next step would be to fussy cut everything out. So I'm just going to do that with these scissors that I have. And then we can start assembling our canvas. I'm going to do this using some foam squares. And... I'm going to put the, well, to start, I'll glue my little antique bronze paint to the top of my paintbrush. And then I'm going to flip everything over and use foam squares on the back of all of that. You could use a liquid glue, but you'd have to make sure that it adheres well since there's a lot going on with that background and there is some dimension. So I'll peel off the foam tape or the, the release paper on those foam squares, and then I can stick down my paintbrushes. I had so much fun with this and now I have a little bit of wall art. I mean, I love making cards, absolutely, but if I could fill my walls with all the little art, that would be so fun. So challenge yourself, grab a canvas, take some of those stamps you have and see how you can decorate your walls with a lot of color. My family always tells me they love having my art up on the walls, which I think is super sweet. Um, I don't always love it because, of course, we're our worst critic, but we definitely need to get better at that because we do need to, like the saying says, do what you love. So there. And that's going to finish off my little canvas. I sure hope you loved it. And if you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Big thanks for all the support you guys give. You guys are incredible, and I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye, everybody.